Hey everybody, welcome back to yet another episode of the Shield Wall Podcast. Uh, this is episode four. Um, I had the opportunity to sit down with a really awesome guy, uh, just great artist and, and, and really just a great person overall. And uh, just talk art and compare our pieces and, and talk a little bit about our process and you know the ins and outs of art a little bit and just things that we noticed throughout our path and our journeys and we get to talk to him about his path and uh, art school and and his first you know experiences with art um, as early as they were and uh, it was just a really great time and he's such a great guy to talk to really easy to talk to and we had a lot of laughs and it was just really fun and uh, I hope you enjoyed as much as I did uh, Brent Johnson everybody but uh, how you been, man? What's new? I mean, catch me up a little bit. Let's see. Well, um, just with all the fun of the you know the apocalypse and everything going on, uh, just yeah. I don't know, just kind of getting into painting here and there, um, getting back into it. As you and I had a nice painting session last night, so that was cool. Got to yeah. do a little um, digital there. So um, the thing we've been doing is um, just for the viewers is we've been choosing subject matters for each other and we're painting what the other person, what we think would be kind of cool if that person could paint just to see what they come up with, so. That's always crazy doing... too, cause like you usually get to choose your own subject matter. You get to choose what you'd like to do, stay in your comfort zone. Do you think, is that something you went through at art school all where they were like, this is what you have to provide for us rather than what you would like to provide? Um, yeah, I, I tried to challenge myself and do things I sucked at, <laughs> it's like, it's one of those things, if I already know how to do it, why do it? So I would. Um, not not all the time. I mean, sometimes I went with what made me comfortable, but I always tried to paint, like, a lot less, a lot more light than a lot of people do. Like, mm -hmm. a lot of people do the classic, a lot of cast shadows with a black background, which is very successful, um, but it's a lot harder to work with light. So that's why I do that. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Now, not what? all the time, but you know, well, I go back sure. to doubt about myself. I'm like, I gotta do this, but... But, you got to knock out a really good one <laughs> just to, yeah, just to get that, get it back, get back on your horse. Now, yeah. have you always, I mean, have you always been into art? Was it something you wanted to just do here and there? You know, when did you wake up and realize like that was something you were very interested in? Oh my gosh. Well, I was like five years old. <laughs> That's yeah. fair. Yeah. Moving those finger yeah. paints around and you're like, hell yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is yeah. awesome. Yeah, I just... Yeah, pretty much. Um, just drawing superheroes. Oh man, even when I was like five, I was drawing superheroes. I mean, I had. Uh, I always tell this story to everybody, but um, my mom comes home from parent teachers conference and she said, "Well, I had an interesting talk with Mrs. Damp. That was my kindergarten teacher." And I'm like, all right, yeah, what? And she goes, "Yeah, um, she said she's gonna have words with Spider-Man because that's all Brett talks about." <laughs> so, yeah. That's, that's, I guess it's been in my blood all my life. So mm -hmm. all these movies coming out in the last 10, well, 12, what, 13 years now? Yeah, about 13 um, years. Oh my gosh, yeah. Has it been that long? Movies. It's been that long. How, when did, uh, was it, maybe X-Men was maybe the first or Spider-Man? Well, that's true. That was 1999. So yeah, X-Men was 99. And then Spider-Man came out, which Spider-Man's my favorite. Love that. Um, but yeah, I mean, the ones that were, like, and I love the, the original Spider-Mans. I can't say it. I don't love Sam Raimi's work. It's good yeah. stuff. But um. Yeah, dude, uh, just the MCU Iron Man is cool, man. They got it. It's like, That's it's like so dream come true for Marvel lovers or even just superhero lovers. Like, it's really incredibly like high budget films. Mm -hmm. Um, so <laughs> that's all Brett talks about. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> well, you like what you know, and you know what you like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. I so, do other things. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Well, no. I mean, so what other things do you enjoy? Okay. Other things I do. Uh, I do archery, I kayak, I work in a sleep lab, so I'm up all night. That's why we're up all night doing crazy <laughs> games at right. Game Beast 3 in the morning. Yeah. Um, so you work your way through um, like grade school and you get into high school. Are you still doing art? That never really stopped. I imagine you signed up for a lot of art classes as much as you could. Was that when you started to get more and more into it? Because obviously this is all before you actually went to art school. Mm hmm mm hmm would you say would you say that you stuck with it your whole life, or did you kind of just get into it yeah, in oh, art school, yeah. or was art no, school the big catalyst? No, um, that was kind of where I made a choice. But um, no, throughout elementary, mid high school, I was in like art shows and stuff, like you know, for school and stuff. Nothing too. Right. Yeah, I usually got like on the dimension or fifth place. Um, but no, maybe but, try hard. No, yeah, but that, that's just it. I mean, I don't think I. I don't think 
I mean, I wasn't involved in it as much as I should have been, but I don't think I really had the opportunity to do an art show that young. So I think that's rather yeah. impressive to be actually in an art it, show. For school or not, I think it's impressive to be in an art show at that yeah, age. And it was, well, they were, you know, within school, but um, I got to say, the art teacher, I mean, we did the whole, like, first floor of our, like, school with artwork. It was all the way around, and it led right down into the art room, which was in the basement. It was, like, wow. you know, probably 100 works up there. It we did, sick. too. I just completely forgot until you said that. Mm. I think most high schools do that. But, yeah, yeah, that just like blows my mind though. I completely forgot that that was even yeah, a thing. Yeah, one of the things. Yeah, actually, I kind of did until you said that. And I'm like, yeah, I guess you know, in high school we did kind of do some stuff. But um, yeah, I mean, I started painting in high school, um, like water or what was it, oil paint? I think is what I started with. And, oh, good. And that's, that's real nice to start off with. Yeah. Oh man, it's so messy. I'm like, I will never use this crap again because I was always black and white. But, did yeah. did the school at least provide the proper environment to like dry those and because oil for anyone that doesn't know <laughs> it takes <laughs> oh god especially with like kids they just glop a whole toothpaste tap or toothpaste tube full and <laughs> like, uh, so um yeah yeah it's no they had actually had a decent environment for what it was and um we even had like a figure drawing class in high school I mean a live like, of a live model. Mm -hmm. Not naked or anything. No, I yeah. know, but I, um, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. Different times, maybe you, maybe they were. Yeah. I don't, <laughs> yeah. um, no, I, I. That's interesting because I'm up again. I don't. Maybe I just don't recall that well. But I'm almost certain we never did that either. Yeah, that's that was pretty rare. Like when I I look back and I'm like, he really did a lot of college type stuff, and it was cool. Like he had us doing crazy shit, like um, drawing with our opposite hands, and like Ugh. actually put. Um, a piece of ch um, charcoal on a meter stick, standing up and drawing on a piece of like newsprint. Now, why? Just, just to try, just to see. It's not about being tight with a pencil. Just trying to get the form down. The general idea is like, don't get detailed. Just kind of throw it down and get yeah. it done. And that I gotta say, that was pretty helpful. Maybe the added handicap is nice because if you almost somehow get good at that, get at least used to it. And then you go back to your traditional like methods. You're like maybe yeah. that much better than you were because you've been paint, painting yeah. with a meter stick for two weeks or however long, you know? It was a couple weeks, yeah. 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 I yeah. think that's a good drill for any craft is to, to provide some sort of handicap and like challenge yourself. That way when you go back to the regular method, uh, it's, mm -hmm. it is just easier. Oh, Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I only kind of understand that from like a judo perspective, but it was always like practice heavy, practice heavy. So I'm always all I'm little me training with all the big guys, all the all the really strong guys, and then I get into my match and I get matched with someone in my own weight class, and it's just like, oh wow, this is great. Yeah, yeah. You know, it was just like yeah, so yeah. much easier. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, it, it's kind of like that, and um, just little things that you don't think about, like when you're standing a meter away, you're you know how. Well, at least when I do art, and I know when you do it, you kind of take different distances and look at it. Sure. You don't always just go right up on it. So by doing that, you could like look at the whole thing without getting too detailed. It it forced you to stay general with it, which that's that's a very important thing. Go general to specific. Don't don't start putting in facial features if you don't even have the body. In there right. Like, that I, yeah, that's interesting. There's something to say there, I think, though. Look at the whole picture. Look at the, any obstacle that's in front of you, any problem you've encountered. Try to look at the whole thing rather, you know, right before you get in there and go, okay, I'll fix this first, I'll fix this next. Mm -hmm. uh, I think people stress themselves out just to death with, without oh just God. taking a look at what's in front of them for a minute. Guilty. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah, right here. Pick me. I still, and it's so bad. I mean, I've done enough artwork throughout the years, and I'm like, I still do it. I'm still guilty of, like, I just get into it so much, but yeah. I, I've tempered it pretty good in the last couple of years, but I still, I'm guilty of it. Mm -hmm. I just, something won't work and I just got to realize, I just got to fluff the whole thing down and then work on it because it's amazing what just a color in the background or the negative space can do to the positive space. And you're like, oh wow, that head is way too small or way too big. Those sure. eyes are way too close to me. Yeah, yeah and so it does, and you won't notice that until you back up a little bit and just yeah. look at it from a an, from an observable distance. I mean, you can get in there and work on stuff, but until you step back to where, if somebody approached your work at a show, you mm -hmm. know, it's generally on a wall, 
right. or, or up in front of them, at least like on a stand, and they're looking at it from an observable distance. They're not up there looking at what you did to the windows, unless they want to, I mm-hmm. suppose. You know, they could probably right, walk right. up and take a look, but you really, yeah. I guess you almost have to like, boy, I didn't even realize that till I just said it myself. Like really take them into account, the observer. Yeah. Oh, it's funny. And you'll always get that one that tries to find something too. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. funny. <laughs> Why did you do that? And it's like, oh, I don't know. Sometimes you- I'm like... Uh, do you find yourself on. with a lot of reasoning or do you just paint do you just let it flow do you just uh there's well a lot of it is flow but um believe it or not it's kind of weird but it's like a controlled flow <laughs> it's like that no makes i get that sense. no it does I, I edit as i go i go this is important this isn't you know what to what to emphasize what not to so it's we talked about that last night when we were painting to emphasize everything is to emphasize nothing you yeah. put everything with equal amount of detail it's just going to be chaotic and your eyes going to go, well, that's too much. It's going to move on. You want right. to, like the, the most successful um, painters, like from, you know, throughout time, if you look at some of their work, it's just like three marks and then it's like not, I mean, not the whole painting. But I know like what you mean. Of, like, yeah. Like John Singer paints like a piece of fabric. It's just a few marks and it's like, oh my God. How do you do that? Right. It's still, it's still witchcraft to me. I, mean, I'm... <laughs> I love that saying. I use that all the time. Um, <laughs> can you kind of explain how there's a sort of way that because we are like, like by optic, like obviously we have two eyes working together that we sort of read an image from almost a certain direction. Mm-hmm. Can you mm-hmm. sort of like walk me through that? Like how does that work as far as artwork is concerned? Um, well, you know I'm what I mean? Head, I, I'm a big fan of diagonals in my work. Like, um, you probably, I know you picked some stuff here. We'll see if it works, but we'll, we'll see. Well, that's, that's something to keep an eye on. Like when he shows my work to see if there's any diagonals, there probably is. I love diagonal from like, let me get the screen here. Kind of mm-hmm. like this and like this, or even yeah, the way, well, look at the way I set up my camera. I mean, that's like diagonal. Yeah. <laughs> you, you seem to enjoy that yeah. angle. Very, very subconsciously. It's just, it's just more dynamic. It just flows through the piece. Like. The eye moves from, you know, of course, left to right in, in our culture and um, just try to make it kind of, that's kind of how I flow it. Yeah. And then it, what, it, you, what, do you, what do you look for when you do yours? The thing is, I don't real when I'm actually working on it, when I'm actually working on it, I don't necessarily take that into effect. What I'm more concerned of is the opposite direction, I guess you could say, like the foreground mm-hmm. to background direction Mm -hmm. in in real time Mm -hmm. space if you will when i was working on my cabin um in the mountains there um Mm -hmm. i worked from back to front as i almost always Mm do so the snow in the painting the snow was actually the very Mm -hmm. last thing that went on Mm -hmm. if that makes Mm -hmm. sense so i work this way no that's it's good that you have a formula too and then um we were talking about working with layers same idea just you know, you, you block all those off, keep them separate, and then you can work on them freely. Then when they're all where you want them, you throw them all together. And right. And the reason I bring it up is like, and, and this happened with mine too, um, I initially painted it with the cabin on the right side of the, 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 the frame, the piece. And I, I inverted it. I took two yeah. pictures and I inverted it and I sent them to you and I was like, um, you know, what am I missing here? Mm-hmm. And it, it, it took you, to, I'm glad I did because you said like, well, put the cabin on the left. We look that way anyway. Well, I mean, you already done it. You're like, I kind of like how this looks when I flipped it. And it's mainly just because that's how the eye work, the works, just for me. I mean, it's just more... Uh, aesthetic? Uh, yeah, aesthetic and just pleasing to the eye. It's more natural. Mm-hmm. Like, it's going to be harder for somebody to go and, like, look at it. And not harder, but so, it's like we were talking about when we were setting this up, like, earlier. It's, it's hard to, like, certain things are subconsciously, somebody looks at them and goes... Ugh, that just even they're not even thinking yeah. about it. It's just like, oh, that's not right. And then click, We're talking oh. to each other, but if we had our devices set up in a certain way, we'd be talking to each other over here. Right. It, it would. It wouldn't make any sense. Uh, no matter how. I don't think. No matter how good the conversation might be, it wouldn't look right. I'm trying to look this way, like. Because yeah, because <laughs> you're like yeah, exactly. The iPad's here, but I'm like. <laughs> Well, to give you guys an idea about angles, and I'm kind of glad I chose this piece now. You'll notice this on your second screen. Uh, this is one of his works. Uh, maybe you could tell us a little bit about it as it pops up here. Um, there we are. Hopefully that transitions fast for you on your side. Let's see. I think I see you doing it on this. Oh, there we are. Oh, oh my God, yeah. Spider-Man. 
So there he is. There's <laughs> there's Spider Man again. But speaking of angles, speaking of direction, uh, maybe just talk us through this piece a little bit. Ooh, okay. Well, um, I just wanted to do something like more of a landscape, but I wanted to put Spider Man in there. I wanted to be in there, but not like the entire subject matter. Um, but uh, so Spidey's swinging through the center. I think that is pretty much Times Square. I could be wrong about that. I'm, I'm terrible. Well, I think that's the Empire State Building that's in the sun there in the middle. That's right. Gotcha, and, gotcha. Uh, I was just trying to make it like the, the building's actually like that diagonal in the upper the upper right of the painting. Okay. And I go with like all those, those windows and everything just kind of leads you to the right side of the painting, like the way he's swinging, just to kind of give you that sense of motion and movement. I understand. And, Mm -hmm. And that dark side there is just kind of to cement that one side so it's not moving as much. And then the other side's a lot more, like the, those left buildings are a lot more static, I feel like. And those other buildings are a lot more dynamic and move you through the piece a little bit more. So, Yeah, that's interesting. And I, I you do get a sense of motion from this. It doesn't, it, even though it's a still piece, is that something you're kind of striving towards with pieces like this? You want it to feel like it's in motion? Sometimes. I mean, sometimes I want it to be almost like static. Yeah, mm -hmm. so... Yeah, it depends on the situation. Like the one I, that you sent me a, a reference photo of last night, that like glacier-looking scene. That's that. Um, that one's going to be very static-looking, and I want it to be. And you want it to be. You want it to mm -hmm. remain static. Yeah, water. exactly. The water isn't moving. It's. Oh, I think it's like almost glass. Um, and the medium on that. That was that acrylic or watercolor or. That was watercolor. That's yeah, all watercolor. So, yeah, I mainly work in a watercolor cell. I do acrylic occasionally. I used to do oil exclusively when I was in school, but kind of got allergic to it. Like the linseed oil really clogs me up. It gives me a migraine. So interesting. Really well vent ventilated. Yeah. If I had a decent studio, I could probably do it again, but I don't have that kind of ventilation system. So sure. I just, it gives me, I tried it like one time and I walked around with a migraine for like two days. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's annoying. I, I didn't realize they, that the paint itself was, uh, I don't know, so capable of doing so. Yeah, it's it's strong. Uh, the linseed oil mainly. I mean, that's the base of oil is linseed oil, um, and you use it as a medium, almost like you would water with watercolor, just to dilute it. And whew, after you get a bunch of that going for about three hours, it's like yeah. Ball. I don't know how Eric does it. Like I'll go over and um, look, go in his studio and look at paintings, and whew, strong. I I can't take it. It's like oh yeah. Man, I, now does he have them all in his own studio? They're like all sitting sort of in the same oh, like yeah, area. Yeah. Well, you see the stuff he produces. It's amazing. Yeah, that's true. I it's I, I I know this isn't like pertinent, but it's too bad his Instagram's like missing because there was a lot of good stuff on there. I'll find out what happened. Now, so you, uh, you work your way through art school. You get out of art school, uh, like you said, you worked a lot with oil. Worked your way into watercolors. Um, mm -hmm. When was it that the digital painting started to kind of um, you like sneak out? <laughs> was it like? Was it? <laughs> <laughs> was it like I was really the catalyst for that though or had you even tried it beforehand I hadn't Eric had gotten it got into it for probably about five six years before you even got into it okay and, um I, I wanted to try it at his place and you know what I take that back I did it's weird though I took like a drawing that I did it was like a what was it like a beach freighter or something like tanker and um I did some just slight enhancements with light on it and stuff just to see what it was like and um boy if i went back and looked at that now i'd probably be like Ugh, that's what i did but because um, right. it was it was garbage i didn't know what i was doing but um no you sent me that one harley quinn and i'm like holy shit i'm like you did that in an afternoon I'm like dang yeah, was, yeah there's something crap. about the process yeah. that remains the same but those mm. just the way some of the paint lays down, some of that lighting effects, um, you can just do so much, it seems, with digital that I can, I could do it physically with acrylic, but, I mean, we're just talking, it's, like, infinitely amounts more time. It, well, that's just it. Like, even with acrylic, even though it dries fast, you still got to wait for it to dry. With this, you go, well, I don't like it. I don't, yeah, but, I lo and I think that's what I love, and it helps me kind of, almost keeps me on track. Because when I have to go fix something on an acrylic piece, I... Like you said, I either have to wait for it to dry or wait for that, paint it white, and st almost start all over again or just adjust it with the colors that are already surrounding it if I'm trying to do like yeah. something small. That's uh, the and then I and then I put it on the shelf and I don't do it for weeks. Mm -hmm. Like it just it's like, oh, I'll get to that later and I 
with digital, it just happens. It just happens so much faster because I just go, oh, I don't like that. I'll just change it. And I, I got to say, like for people starting out in art, um, I would recommend digital just because you don't waste a lot of paint. You can, you can just, you know, on the fly, you can mix all day. And um, I mean, it's cut my mixing time when I do watercolors down by like half. And um, and I'm a pretty fast mixer anyway, but I can just really eyeball something. We talked about that last night and just eyeball it. And right. Just, uh, um, and it gives me a lot of knowledge in a short amount of time. And yeah, I've, I've noticed that a lot of the like... Um, I don't know if I want to call them skills so much, but just some of the know-how I picked up while painting digitally transferred back to my uh, physical mm -hmm. paintings. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. It just well, like, you, like you said, mixing for sure. But even, I, I used to, like, if I made an error, I used to wait till it was dry, paint it white, and start all over again, which is so the wrong answer, but that was just how I did it. Now, now doing so much digital work where it was just like, well, I can just, you know, instead of erasing, I can just use the color that's in my background or whatever's in front of them. And I can mix the, you know, I can fix the error a little bit that way by just changing where the colors lay rather than doing it all over again. And digital gave me that skill for sure. Um, your very first, I think I, I got it here. Your very first digital painting. Uh, if, if we'll have a look at that, uh, which is here. Um, I think there's a date on it, but the year was maybe 15. I looks. I think it was 15. Yeah, I believe, yeah. Shit. He's not wearing hockey. <laughs> exactly. No, he's not. Um, I'm sorry, just taking a drink there. But no, so this was your very first digital piece. Well, just a sec, I'm getting attacked. Um, yeah, it's my first successful one. Like, I remember... Remember when I got that first tablet and I couldn't, it was kept acting like, ow, like a mouse? Yeah, I'm going through that and, myself right now. Yeah, yeah, exactly, that kind of thing. And that's what I was, that's what I thought digital painting was. I didn't realize it was simulating a mouse. Right. So I could not do it. I was like, it was a Spider-Man one, of course, and it looked like garbage. It took me like five hours and it looked like shit. So I'm like, nope. <laughs> um, and then I finally figured out, I think you helped me with that, like, with a setting yeah you did because i had it you would come up to visit and i'm like i'm having trouble with this one as well um but uh um yeah no i understand yeah. but this goes back to those angles that you love and i don't did you do you think maybe you chose this n not for just for the character of course because it's I, I love the subject matter but the staircase behind him we were talking about that the other day mm -hmm. do you think that the oh. staircase kind of breaks up the image a little bit for our eyes where we're getting this, we're getting this very in focus image of him, but then there's this stairwell in the back, and it you kind of you kind of do well, notice it though. Well, again, look for the diagonal there. It is. <laughs> yeah, right the left side of his like head. It's that. That's I love those diagonals. Yeah, and then the the one on the upper be the upper left of the painting as well. So right, and what I love about that too is, and this is where it differs greatly from mine, is I usually just do like a, what, what, what do we always call it? The uh, the Sears portrait, like backdrop. Oh, like, <laughs> the impressions. <laughs> the impressions, yeah, exactly. Like the Goldbergs, they have that like ad where they're, it's got like the two heads floating in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yep. I love that. Um, How old I am. It's funny because, like, I for the longest time, I kind of thought that was just, like, a good way to do it. I'll just put, like, a backdrop in. It'll be a color. I'll pick when I get there. And then I'll, mm -hmm. I'll do the rest of the painting. But what I found was if the painting, if the back is too flat of a color, you do get that sort mm -hmm. of, like, curtain, I don't know, you like, do almost look, look to it. And it, looks like it looks like a stage. It doesn't look natural. Yeah. Right, it, yeah. Flat, flat, you got to be really careful with flat color. And especially if it's dark flat, it's going to look really strange. Mm. It almost like pushes forward of whatever you're painting. Right. Yeah. And do you think it's almost because as you start nearing the neutral colors and you start like getting towards black, <laughs> it, it's just a, it's, you would think it would act like a void, but it's actually like a block. It just doesn't really yeah. like, it's like you said, it sits yeah. right in the front. Yeah. Most um, painting teachers that I took, they don't want you using solid black or pure white. You never do that. Mm. Like, you, always, you always mix them. Always. Interesting. Yeah. I, in, I, in, in digital, at the very least, I do use pure whites, but in such small amounts. Lens flares, um, just like the very edge of like a jacket collar, just to give it a little bit of like an actual edge. 
Mm -hmm. um, so it doesn't just bleed into the shirt. I, right. I, that was a lot of what I was going through last night with the John Wick piece. Is uh, mm -hmm. His collar's kind of like popped right here. And I needed that edge so that it actually popped. You know what I mean? Right, right. Yeah, yep. Yeah. yeah, I know what you mean. Um, yeah. No, so Spot that was your... Those, what's that? Watch those ties that poke your eye what? out. <laughs> <laughs> those are fixed now. I fixed those. Oh, okay, okay. So that was your first piece. Uh, that what did, what did we say? 2015? I think so, yeah. Yeah, it's 2015. Because you showed me that Harlequin one, I think the summer of 2015. And then I kind of got into it in the fall. I picked up that Wacom tablet. Yeah, that sounds about right to me because I I have, I got mine in 2014, but the laptop I had at the time was just, boy, to think of how old that thing was and to think that that was an old laptop then. So it yeah, wasn't running like one. any paint program. It wasn't running anything. So what I waited for was that, um, remember that like sort of standalone, like ta it was like a monitor tower combo. Yeah, I don't know yeah, if they yeah. make those anymore, but... Um, yeah. That was the very first PC I got uh, Corel on. Mm, yeah. And then it dawned on me. I was like, oh, Nick gave me that tablet. Mm -hmm. I should just, like, mess around with it. And, boy, it, there's probably Dude. folders worth of, like, unfinished work before I actually did my first piece on it. Just to mm -hmm. figure out, like, how it felt to manipulate yeah, that dude, paint. That's awesome. I, I, I kind of jumped in a little bit, but yeah. yeah. But you also have a, just a wealth of knowledge and experience. You probably yeah. could, you could jump in. I... I <laughs> yeah no um it's one of those things i just didn't know how brushes worked and stuff and just once i have figured it out i was okay but man it, it was a struggle like that kate beckinsale one that i did there the, the van helsing one Woo! that oh my gosh i could probably do that in a quarter of the time now and probably mm -hmm. twice as good but right. i mean i like that one but it's a it's a rough one okay? no but you went and touched it back up o over time i did actually i went and retouched it i almost did kind of paint the whole thing over i mean it's easy when you have that base there but yeah um, it's already laid out in yeah. front of you yeah. yeah um let me see let's bring up one of yours here that i, I gave you to talk about which uh which one would you like let me see yeah let's start with group with group okay so mm -hmm. I, so this is another thing i need to start doing with mine is um <laughs> putting dates on them uh, but this was probably also somewhere in 2015, if I had to guess. Yeah, yeah, I think it was. Um, yeah, I love that one. I I really like your texture in his shoulder blade. That left shoulder is just nice. Man. His left or our left? Uh, his left, our right. Okay. Um, and that was, a lot of it was me, What and it's crazy how old this painting is and how much I kind of remember of it. Mm -hmm. Um the one thing I always wanted to think of was he's literally bark, but he's got such like human eyes. They're so soft and like, like they have like a moisture to them. Yeah. And I, I really wanted to try to get that in there. But, um, I remember thinking like if I can lay down him thicker and heavier and try to get that wood look. Yeah, you did. You really got that texture down. Man. And, uh, a lot of that is really making like I lay down like a like a like a block color, um, mm -hmm. and then I would go smaller in brush, and lower in intensity, and and then like a slightly darker color, and mm -hmm. lay that down a little bit over it, and then mm -hmm. go even smaller brush, even darker, and get all those little lines in there. And like if you look at like where he would have a nose if he had one, um, mm -hmm. all those just vertical lines were just like the smallest brush Corel had to offer, yeah. <laughs> like the one yeah. the one point zero. You know? Yeah, just give it like a semblance of texture without it being like a hard line. Yeah. yeah exactly. Um, but yeah, no, it's actually funny. It kind of reminds me, I really need to uh, put dates on mine. Um, so you're working your way through more and more digital art, and you're, did you find yourself kind of sitting into it more as time went on? Or do you still find yourself in front of an easel, brushes in hand, ready to go? Like, I wish. Um, <laughs> I gotta do that more. Um, I got my easel ready to go. I gotta do that, but um, it's just been digital lately. Just, just with everything being crazy, traveling back and forth every week, and you know, just to um, meet with my girlfriend and stuff like that. Um, sure. But it's just been, you know, well, I went from being a recluse to um, having to have a social life now. So <laughs> that's a little hard. Yeah. So like, a little easier having, you know, when you 
and I understand because I'm so I'm so similar in so many ways. Like if, if I have the opportunity to stay home, I promise you I will. <laughs> I know. I'm just like maybe the other one to sit in my cave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just like the light. That's so true, though. I'm I'm so similar, but that also gives you plenty of time to just like, hey, I'm gonna knock out a painting. You can just do that. Where yeah. when you're when you're more social, when you're more uh, um, extroverted, when you're more just out there, I guess. Um, I guess it does take away a little bit of time. It, it does a little bit, and that's fine. I'm just getting shower. I love you. I'm just gonna watch this later. So. <laughs> yeah, no, and I, of course, not that it's a bad thing at all. Just like it, it's it's crazy how the. At the drop of a hat, you could have just said, hey, I'll just set up and paint. Yeah. 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 And that and um, just, you know, I've been playing too many video games lately. I mean, I love video games, but I really just got to hunker down. I mean, I was pretty disciplined for a good long time. I mean, I would crank out at least two, three paintings on the on an easel a month. And okay. I, I've done that. I haven't done an easel. Well, I've, I've done a few a year, and that's that's bad. I should be doing at least two a month at least now when you're done with the work it's done you go okay i'm not touching it anymore this painting's done mm-hmm. where does it go i mean you've got to have like a hundred you've, <laughs> you've got to have like a hundred paintings in your house like just like all over the place right uh, i got a bunch in my attic yeah for sure um i work small now too because big paintings suck um they they suck literally suck the paint out of all your tubes because they take up so much damn pain and uh yeah i just i don't know you just yeah, yeah. so because like yeah because like you can you could roll them like you said like and put them in like an actual like yeah tube not, capsule yeah. yeah yeah exactly with the small ones if i'm not doing canvas as well um and like my my art teacher he's like my yoda pretty much that i um learned from north country community college or my teacher from north country community college watercolor teacher He's like, you know, you're really not going to sell anything if it's huge. It's like, who the heck wants to put this giant thing on their wall, you know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> something that fits, you know, here to here. Yeah. That size. Yeah, sure, cool. sure. That's interesting, too, because I love to paint big. Like, mm-hmm. that. It, I feel like that's in a way more fun. Well, not, not in a physical aspect, mind you. Well, oh, okay, digital. Well, I was going to say, like, the ones you're doing for, like, the paint and sips or whatever you call them there, um, those aren't bad. Those are a good size. Uh, ah, twisted T. Uh, Everyone hide. <laughs> Work. <laughs> this is the can. <laughs> yeah, you bought that can. That's yeah, funny. This, this, this wax the racism right out of everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I love that clip, man. Oh my gosh! It, you showed me that. I'm like, oh. There were there was a time where I was like waking up and being like, I gotta watch it again. Like it's just so funny. Oh, so anyway, so no, what I what I was working my way towards was, you know, where do you put all these paintings? And I think what I just adore about digital work is like it just goes in my folder, and I had just have it forever, you know. And if you have the the means to do it, you can print them out gigantically. I mean, you go to like Staples, you can well, like I did for you. That was eighteen by twenty four. I did for your right. You and Emily. Yeah. And, um, or you could make it that big. Yeah, that and that's that's just it. That's great. And and you just did that where? What was that? What, staples, that? I think you said. Yeah, staples. Oh yeah, um, so Michael's staples, something similar. I'm sure they could all do it. Yeah, um, definitely. Or not matte. Um, glossy's better. Don't use matte. Matte bleeds. Mm, Yours cut was on that, unfortunately, and I'm like, I wish I would have done it. And honestly, it's it still looks great. Uh, okay, I'm glad you like it. Yeah, no, we do, we do. It, it still looks great. It really does. And like you said, it even if it bleeds, I I can't tell. Um. Oh, so, yeah. oh, no, go ahead. No, go ahead. Just me being a perfectionist with it, but yeah, go Oh, no, I understand. I understand. Well, no, it's funny. So th- you wanted to talk about how perfect it was, though? I used it as a Snapchat filter, and it looks just like me. Remember that? I oh, think I, I think I, I sent you a picture forever that. ago. Yeah. I do remember that. That is funny. Like, oh, my God, that's the painting. It's yeah. Like, we want a view and everything. It was, ab- I mean, talk about, I mean, I mean, I guess it's like holds true to your statement though. Like a little bit of a perfectionist. You nailed it. You nailed the painting. We, we uh, love it. That's one of my better ones. I, I was really happy with that one. Well. Um, let me just, uh, let me just get set up here with um, my notes real quick. But, um, so that was your first one. Your first digital painting was, uh, what did we say? 2015. Mm-hmm. So if I could just bring up your v- most recent one, your most recent one. My most recent, yes. 
is here. And what is that? Uh, January 21? Is that right? Because yeah, that's, that's right. That's was, just the other day. This Friday. This Friday or Thursday. I did it Thursday. Yep. Thursday. Okay. So yeah. the inspiration here is obviously you dove into the show, Hannibal. Mm-hmm. I was hungry for something. Oh, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> no, just kidding. Mm. That's what I put on Instagram. I'm like, I will not have what he's having. Right. But, uh, um, yeah, uh, I don't know. Just kind of walk me through this. I'll point out a couple of things I noticed, but just okay. give me a quick little, um, I don't know. Obviously, I get where the inspiration okay. comes from. Well, considering the first one I did, that was uh, that was like kind of not pulling teeth, but it was difficult just learning how to do things and stuff. But I'm actually, for a first painting, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with how that one came out, that Batman one. This one, um, what I did was I started, I blocked in that whole background, and then I um, did another layer, and I sketched Hannibal over it, just almost like a sure. white frame, and then I just filled it in with color. So, like, just blocked in the colors, and then just like the, the just what I thought the main color was of each area, and then I started putting my lights and darks and making them warmer, cooler, that kind of thing. Yeah, just adjusting as you see fit, mm-hmm. or, or maybe closer to your reference photo, or whatever your preference yeah, is. Just, yeah, a little bit of both. Um, I, I mix it up. Like, I, I definitely, I'm not, I try not to be a slave to the photograph. I am a little bit, but um, I try to keep it just, just kind of blocks of color. Mm-hmm. What I do. Um, little things that I noticed um, where I, I just adore your technique on hair. I love how you do hair. And this is like in all your paintings. Like, I've always loved your hairs, but like, I, it seems to me, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we talked about this a while back. Do you always lay your hair down dark first and work your way to light or the other way around? I I kind of go dark to light. Yeah, um, definite. Because I started like on him, the, uh, the lower right of the painting, like where it's dark. I all started all that. Yeah. I watched that in, and then I went a little lighter, a little lighter, a little lighter. Yeah. Oh, no, thank you. No, that's... Uh, yeah, I, I really like um, Matt's wrinkles. That's why I did it. <laughs> and absolutely. he ha- It's crazy how many times in every movie he's in, they seem to focus very much on his eyes, just right up where those wrinkles kind of are. He's one of those guys that can get away with having a ton of wrinkles and look amazing. You know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for real. Now, I also noticed right about um, right here on like his cheek and uh, just slightly down on like the, the throat here, you added a bit of like speckly, I, I wouldn't call oh, it yeah. texture, but... Like that is a one. that is an incredible little touch, especially I, especially on an um on uh sorry Mads slightly older gentleman. Um, yeah, no, it's a uh, um it's that ruddy kind of look, and um that's what I try to I I use that the particle brush is the way to go on that. Yeah, I love that. I think that's an I, I just think it's a beautiful touch. It would have looked just fine without it, but I just think it's an amazing touch. Yeah, and uh, just I a huge attention to detail. Yeah. That's a fun one. That, yeah, two and a half hours. Um, so if you don't mind, um, no, and I, I well, brought us back to we'll the <laughs> back to the screen for a moment. Um, there's a few. I I don't know. Um, I don't know if I should call them like honorable mentions or just my favorites, maybe, um, or just maybe I don't know. Just some I also wanted to just kind of like expose to uh, to everyone. But um, let me go back here, uh, and I'll walk you through. So we did Spider Man. Okay, so this one here blows me away uh this is 2019 i want to say 2018 uh it's commissioner gordon oh yeah oh cool yeah that's actually one of my favorites um that was a fun one that was cool because i took dried up watercolors that were on my um, palette and i just used those i'm like "Eh, they're sitting there i just threw it on there (laughs) dude i look at this one like more than I care to admit, <laughs> this one is <laughs> this is one of my absolute favorite paintings that you've ever on, done. Sure. I'm crushing on old Oldman, man. I love me some Gary. I love me some Gary. Dude is like so versatile. He's just like he 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 stole my heart in Dracula, and I just I it's been forever a thing. I just I love the guy. I love his work. I just. He's such an expressive individual, and uh, he's one of those guys. I think we've said this before. Like, I would just love to sit and have a beer with him. I just want to talk to him. Oh my gosh! Yeah. But um, I love the 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 little detail that this was all just already on your palette, like dried up, not used. Mm-hmm. And you just this is what you made out of that? Are you kidding me? That's amazing, dude. Uh, it's no, thank you. It's uh, 
Lots of practice since 95. Yeah, sure, sure. Now, with something like this, um, do you take the same approach that you do with digitals? Did you, you got your backdrop in, you sketched them in, and you filled them in? Pretty much, yeah. Um, yeah, so what I did, like you said, sketched them out in pencil. Um, I make sure I get my pencil drawing pretty accurate. I try to get it as close as I can without, you know, just getting all the proportions right, everything like that. And mm -hmm. then I just block the background and then just kind of block in my the major areas of color and just kind of go from there. Like you said earlier, you just start with your general and work your way into your specifics. Yep, yep, exactly. Okay, just yeah. boy, I thought I lost yeah. you there for a second. I'm sorry. No, no, I'm sorry. I was just looking at it. Um, yeah, just like dead last, which the eyes, course, and that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, now, and I go through this sometimes myself with anybody wearing glasses. Um, for me, facial hair and glasses are usually like the last thing I do. Yeah, yep, that's, um, that's how you approach them, I think. Is that also how you generally approach something yeah. like that? Yeah, yeah. I almost want to sit the glasses on their face if I can. Well, that and I, I got to make sure to get the pupils in the right spot. Because if you don't, you don't do it right, they'll kind of be like <laughs> all cross-eyed. And... <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Remind me to make that the thumbnail for the video. <laughs> <laughs> that was timestamp. Let's see, probably uh, forty-eight. Yeah, like 48. forty-eight something. Okay, I give you a few more. Yeah. <laughs> No, that's, I have no <laughs> that was perfect no but that's that's honestly one of my absolute favorites of, of your of your physical pieces not that you don't have just dozens and dozens more that I like but um if you could also walk me through this next one here uh did I get here uh here we go uh, I should transition for you in just a moment this was 2016 I think uh yeah that's 16 oh, was it? oh yeah that was my first uh Corel 20. 2015 painter, I think, um, where I got, uh, I was using that Corel that you were using, and then... Oh, the I, Essentials, yeah. Yeah, Essentials, Paint Essentials. I went to Corel Painter 2015, and yeah, that was a fun one. Um, I love the background in that. I gotta do more stuff like that in my backgrounds. That spider Woman one is kind of like that. Um, oh yeah, very but, dark. But this is this has that beautiful light. This is, this, is, yeah. this is powerful. This is a lot of, I love the particles in the air. Um, I Her love arm. the lighting is incredible. That arm's perfect. I agree. Or the armor. I mean, armor. Oh, I was looking at. No, I'm looking at. So sorry. I don't know if I. I don't know if you can see my cursor. If that's just on my end. I can see it. Yeah. This um, this I, definition I, in the shoulder, like in the muscles, right here, all the way through. Yeah. That's so subtle okay. because I know just from my own experience. I well, I don't know if you're like me. I zoom in a lot. Oh yeah. No. Oh, I do. Once I. Once I lay it down, like on that Hannibal one, um, I pretty much kept it screen, not screen size, less, probably half screen size. And then once I blocked him in and I got like just the blocks, that areas just to make like where his cheekbones were, where his nose was. Well, here, like let that. me, uh, let me go back to Hannibal. There we go. Um, yeah. go ahead and say that again. I'm sorry. Okay, just a sec. Um, so yeah, yeah. So his, um... So I just kind of blocked in the um, the nose. It was just a shape. The um, I didn't have I didn't have the lips in there. I just kind of put a line just to kind of show where the lips were. Sure. I tried to do a um, just a line for the eyes, like midway through the eyes across the head, just so I line them up right because he's looking up. And if I didn't have that line there, I always screw the eyes up. Like if I don't. Yeah. Do that, right? They won't be looking in the right direction, so I have to have those guidelines there. Um, but yeah, just, just generalize it and then throw it in. And but I would yeah. say this is a tricky kind of pose because that chin's nice and high, but he's also kind of looking just slightly in front of him. And I would say just to touch down cause he's so focused on that, on that moment right there. Well, right, right here, what he's holding. So you, you, you don't end up with too, too much foreshortening like you would front on, but that, that I, I can understand what you're saying there with getting those eyes right. Yeah. Cause like. And I always do this too. Like when I first did those eyes, I had I actually had like part of the cheekbone showing up there and stuff like that. Uh -huh. and, it wasn't even there. and I put it in there. I just do it. And I'm like, oh, he doesn't even have that. So Right. Yeah. But then also, like you said, you're not a slave to the photograph. You're doing your own work. You're you're trying to, I don't know, probably express yourself in some way too, in some way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. Um I Right. 
I want to um, I want to make sure I got all of them. Okay, so we went through Spider Man, uh, mm-hmm. Commissioner Gordon, Wonder Woman, Batman. Oh, so yeah. So with that, probably just to be a, a bit of a product of your upbringing, or even just like your hobbies and interests. Would you say that comics and video games really inspire a lot of your art? It's just something you enjoy mm-hmm. to paint. Yeah. yeah, that and just. 2008's Prince of Persia, they had like the um, concept oh. art that you could unlock as you played it. Mm-hmm. And that just blew me away. I'm like, oh my God, look what people can do with digital painting. And yeah. And that was being, then. I, yeah. And I, I wasn't even thinking about digital painting. I was just in painting in general. Doing this. And yeah. Then you got into it. Dang, give that a go. <laughs> That's pretty cool. That's interesting. Now, what is it about the comic book characters or even just. Um, games or really any of them is it just because you have a a a sort of a um a love for that character to begin with that you enjoy painting them or is it because of the way they're often structured you look at superman any superman painting is just like he is an olympic god you know from the shoulder to the waist it's almost easier to paint them sometimes in my opinion well and the reason that like most superhero characters, I mean, especially back in the old days, is why they're wearing, like, tights is because it's easier to draw human form that way. Like, they were pretty much drawing them naked and then adding the, like, the, you know, strongman, like, underwear, yeah, like, yeah. as a classic strongman thing back then. And, um, but yeah, that, it was just easier to get human form because drawing fabric is kind of a pain, but a lot of artists do it now. They make it, they kind of make it a point to, like, get big costumes a little bit more, like, sensical i guess you could say or yeah just, uh, they or they'll often be combined with a piece of maybe hard armor or something like i think once new 52 yeah, launched yeah. you see a lot of like van braces and yeah. pieces of like shoulders on the, the um very shoulders. injustice yeah. injustice yeah. did it very well i think they kind of have yeah. like a lot of um don't mind me i'm just man, gonna grab a drink here yeah man of steel with the um taking out the red underwear there like exactly yeah. and a lot of people hated that oh my gosh and i'm I thought it was the right move. Don't get yeah. me wrong, like adore Christopher Reeves. I love everything he did. I right. I I watch those movies all the time. I like them. Uh, I love them. Is that underwear on the outside? <laughs> Wait, yeah, it just like doesn't. I don't know. It doesn't compute. But it does go back to that strongman, like unitard kind of. Um, yeah, it is. It's suit like almost pro wrestling kind of thing. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Oh, so that strong? Because I mean, that's. Pro wrestling's actually kind of been around for a while, as far as I know. It's like just that whole. You know, I actually don't know. Yeah. I think my dad used to say he said he used to watch it when he was younger stuff, and it wasn't like you know as elaborate as and like much of a pageantry as it is now. But right, right. Yeah, it bit of a spectacle. Of... It was a physical spectacle, though, like Andre yeah, the Giant I mean, wrestling suit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, no, I can understand. And, and, and frankly, I do that a lot as well. Um, I, I really, really enjoyed the Spider-Man photo that we did together. Um, yeah. uh, photo, a, uh, painting. Um, yeah, that, that's, uh, that's on your, it, it is in my intro. It, it comes through yeah. in the intro and, mm-hmm. um, I, I could probably find it somewhere. Um, actually it is, I think it's like one of the first few in. But um, what I enjoyed about it is that we did them so differently, and I, I love the sort of like artistic expression in that respect. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you? How did you find that? Like, where? At what point did you sort of realize like this is how I paint? This is how I express myself. You know what I mean? Is that sort of something that happens naturally, or is that something that's almost taught to you? I think it's just naturally it's hard to say like i didn't sit down and say i'm gonna paint like this it just i just gravitated towards what i love there it is. you know I, yeah it's it's kind of it's a little bit of both kind of like force gump at the end is it is it destiny or you know is it random is it both you know is it both yeah because when i ask myself i don't really know i think i just enjoy painting i enjoy the process of it and in a way i guess that is my expression but I don't get like, I don't have like a bad day and I'm like running over to set up my, you know, station and I'm like, I'm going to paint my fucking feelings out. That doesn't happen to me almost no, ever. I, 
I find. I mean, I, I guess some people really do that. I I find like when I was in art school, and I've seen even some. <laughs> Successful artist way. Right? Uh, I don't mean to interrupt you. I just cracked myself up because I just imagined me like throwing buckets of paint <laughs> at like a canvas. Just it's like oh. that that one guy on uh, TikTok that does the aggressive stuff. Like if people <laughs> yeah. do things aggressively, just kind of <laughs> you know, just, just like splashing that. paint everywhere. Yeah, yeah like I just that just doesn't happen. I don't know if that happens to anyone. Maybe it does, but I I just haven't encountered it. But um, no, I'm so sorry. You were saying like, you know, is oh, that something that's is that something you find on your own? You think? Yeah, yeah. It's just you, you get your own voice with it. It's just what you gravitate towards, and yeah, you know, the the main thing is just have fun. You know, enjoy it, and that's why I do paint because superheroes. It's enjoyment for me. So it's just like, and I, I mean, I do a lot of just like traditional landscapes and things like that. So regular portraiture, I just sure really, they're just well, they're dynamic photos and. That's what I like. Mm, excuse me. Um, you do have like an actual, like, d now, did a specific artist that you maybe deemed your favorite influence you? Or is it more oh, you yeah. just enjoy their oh, work for their own reason? John Singer Sargent. Yeah, absolutely. Was yeah, like, if you look at work, it's it's a lot like me. Yeah, very much. Now, a billion times better than me, but um, yeah, he's, he's great. You once you said now did you did you encounter his work in art school and went like oh wow you know what's funny I was a bit of a cocky asshole back then but um, <laughs> I, um, the, the teachers are like you need to look at John Singer Sargent I don't want to look at anybody not that I thought I was better than that but I'm like I just don't want anybody influencing me or anything like that I probably like a year out of art school I I looked him up and I'm like holy crap why was I not looking at him <laughs> it was yeah. like yeah. It, it just why are we yeah. so and i say we in a very proverbial way not as artists not as not as you know creators of anything i just mean we why are we so like that sometimes where it's just like no i just want to i want to do my work i want to do it my way this is how it's going to go and it's everybody on the outside of that tunnel is like hey i can help you let me show you and it's just we won't let yeah. that happen it's a fear of not being an individual like taking help something like that that's mm. I think, I don't know what it was for me at least and then toss in an artist yeah. mindset and it's just like yeah. i gotta do i gotta do what i'm here to do <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it's, it's setting something interesting but yeah okay so yeah um now now with with john with john singer sergeant like was it the way he paints or what he painted both oh both uh, the, or with no, I'd say about equal. Um, just the way he handles landscapes and portraiture, whew, love it. Um, and to see it in person, it's one of those, like, you look at Monet and um, Renoir, the Impressionists, like, they look great in books. You look at them in a the gallery, they their colors look kind of, not crappy, but they're very primary. Like, they are so vivid. Yeah. And it's a much i like a little more subtlety in my work yeah i found that out because when i was younger oh my gosh i was all about impressionism and now i can't i that i don't hate it i still love it i think it's an amazing like monet is still amazing to me his brushwork is killer but um it's like i just don't i don't like it like as much as i did like sergeant oh my gosh like i've been to a few i actually went to one show that was all him and that was I was worth it. Were you yeah. just in your own personal paradise, like, uh, yeah, spend hours yeah. kind of thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It really kind of was. It's just, it's amazing. I mean, they're gigantic. They're like probably like eight feet tall. He's painting some of them, and he did them for like the aristocracy at the time. It was like early nineteen hundreds, and whoo, damn, they're good. Yeah. <laughs> just, uh, what was his art influential in the sense that it added a bit of like beauty to its time frame, to it, to its era? Or was it was he just renowned for his skill alone kind of thing? Um, again, a little both. He did a lot of World War One, like almost like journalist things. There's like soldiers kind of sitting around on a wall, broken down. I mean, it's, it's almost like photography in a way for that. I mean, they did have photography back then, right? Um, he um he just did a, his own kind of like it was almost like a historical reference of things, and so that kind of our um he's he's considered post impressionistic, so that's like. 1900, 1910, um, right after Van Gogh. 
And he, it's so funny, though, in the art books, they don't even hardly mention it. He gets, like, uh, a paragraph. A little, like, a blurb with his picture or maybe one of his yeah. works, and then it's, like, the next chapter's on the next page kind of thing. It, yeah, pretty much. Um, he, uh, yeah, there was one that was controversial because the woman that he painted the um, dress didn't have straps on it. You didn't do that back then. Oh, and that's, we're going so far back that that's, like, yeah. Yeah. borderline yeah. pornography, probably. Yeah, exactly, and um, they, I think they made him paint it back in to display it, and that's like the only thing he's renowned for in the books, and it's like, oh my gosh, the the dude just has done thousands and thousands of works, and it's like, how'd he do that? You know? Yeah. Lordy, like, how did he get there? How did he get there? <laughs> exactly. Um, would you, and now, <laughs> how did he get there? Do you ever find yeah. that, and, and, and the reason, when you quoted that, it just like cracked me up. Would, do you ever find that you? Oh, what you drink in there? Oh, yeah, a little, a uh, little twisted tea. The new, uh, the new concealed carry weapon of the age. Um, <laughs> it's not hard to conceal. It's got in your pocket there. <laughs> um, oh Christ, I don't know what the hell I was gonna say. Let me look here. Oh, so like you know, you find yourself at, you know, after all this time, sort of like a. I don't know, attaching yourself to him a little bit, you realize like uh, just how much you, you like his work or how much even his work inspires yours. Um, did art do that as a whole for you at all? Did it sort of pull you through any parts of your life or it push you through obstacles? Or was it, is it really just a very serious hobby, something you just truly love? Uh, I just always kind of gravitated towards it, I guess. Just kind of something I've, I've enjoyed. Um, as far as getting me through like life, like anything rough um i guess in <laughs> i middle school i drew so that the bigger kids wouldn't kick the crap out of me <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> that's, that's yeah, yeah. The, the the classic school like system here's a picture of spider-man don't kill me yeah <laughs> uh who's yeah. older between you two uh brent is Four, I was about I wasn't about to guess but I was like I was gonna say 44 and I was like okay I just want to be sure no that's funny um no I can I can understand that I can understand how you know it's really just something you you gravitated towards and I I hate the word hobby sometimes because I feel like that's it's not like you're throwing a frisbee out back it's an enormous yeah. amount of time and effort it's an you know skill and schooling and and you you put in you put in the work and anyone that knows me by now knows that i just have such a deep respect for people who sit down and just put the work in uh in any craft really yeah. uh there's there's not a lot of shortcuts if any i mean you next to like the art of tracing perhaps uh there's there's no shortcut you got to you just have to sit down and do it mhm mm mhm mm so I mean, there was a point, I guess you said, like, when you when did I get my voice? Um, not as much a voice, but, like, sometimes it was kind of hard just to sit at the easel. I'm like, what do I do? And now, when I approach a painting, I know how I'm going to do it for the most part. Mm. I'm like, I, it's it's a lot easier. I just have my technique. And before that, when I didn't have, like, a good regimen down, it, it, was, it was like pulling teeth sometimes. Oh, my gosh. Sure. Sometimes where I just... Blow a blob of something over it, and out, and out it goes into the bin. Right, right. Now, did any of those become ones you kept, though? Were they just so difficult, so difficult, you wanted to stop, and then you went, you know what, I'm just going to finish this fucking painting. Oh, yeah. And yeah, then yeah. you ended up kind of liking it, even? Um, yeah, I guess. The like is kind of... <laughs> that's a strong word. Strong word, that like, yeah. Now, we technically did this one together. Um, this is my version, I believe. Uh, let me let me scroll over here. This one of those surprise ones. I don't know what you're putting up. Um, well, this is my version, and it's actually oh. I didn't realize it until tonight. It's actually in my starting screen. But we did this piece together. Okay. Um, it'll, it it should pop up for you shortly. Here. Oh yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah. That, that, I did send that. Yep. Now, if yeah. I recall oh. correctly, was it your idea? Did you want to do this one? I, yeah, yeah. Well, we, um, I said, let's pick something and do it. And, um, I did it watercolor and you did it in digital. Yeah. Right. Oh, that's yeah. right. That was at a time when 
You did it in your yeah. You did do it in watercolor. Yeah, I, I was actually doing digital at that time. I don't think. Um, no. you may not have. Um, and for the life of me, and I tried to find it, but um, let me go back here. I tried to find it, but um, I think it's on your Instagram. Uh, ladies and gents, if you if you want to follow Brent here, the, his his IG is right below his picture there, and there's a fair amount of work on Instagram. Oh, yeah. Um, if if not exclusively so, I think perhaps. Um, not all of it actually. There's a lot of things I don't have on there. I probably have like forty something works on there, but I think last time I checked in my digital painting folder on my phone, I had hundred and seventy of them. Wow. That's incredible. <laughs> I that I'm like, what? Okay. A hundred and seventy <laughs> over the course of but five, six years now. A lot of them are. I mean, I got those like caricature ones. I did. I put everything in there, but I don't. So sure. It's it's. There's a lot of quick ones that were like maybe an hour if that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Still work though. I mean, I don't think that takes away from, again, you sitting down, putting the time aside just to do the work. Mm-hmm. Um, I think. Uh, what what was it? Was it Jim Carrey? It was like Jim, Jim Carrey, Carrey with like the the, the beard. Yeah. The beard. Yeah. He's kind of. What was the, uh, how did you sit down and just decide to do those? Those, because that was, I remember you sent them to me one night and you just had done them already. They were so fast, but so good. Um, I used to do them a lot in high school. I did like one of my entire faculty for high school and um, that was pretty funny. Oh my gosh. I had some funny shit going on at once, but yeah. Was that, that, was that well received to do, to do our Mm -hmm. of faculty? They did something like, oh, good job, bro. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, exactly. well, I had this one, uh, his, his name, what was his name? I can't remember. They called him Buzzy because he'd come in drunk. So, um, <laughs> I, Man I after my own him. heart. I love that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I had this like little bee just suddenly like landing on his nose and it said buzz over it. <laughs> I put that in there. So I'm like, I don't know if he saw it. But... That's so smart though because the rest of the faculty is probably like, oh, wow. Like... Yeah, 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 I'm sure. And then there was another guy on. Um, it was my math teacher, um, Jimmy Hayden, and he, he kind of talked. When he talked, he'd spit a little bit. So he kind of talked like this. And, um, what do you really? Had, wow. He was, the, he was like the golf coach, and I had a golf ball bouncing off his head, and he was like spitting as it hit him. So I kind of got that in there. That's amazing. Yeah. What do you think? Uh, what do you think is the oldest piece you've done that you still have within your possession? Do you think you have any that go back pretty far? Oh my god! It was. Uh, comic book of the ninja turtles that i did and i still have it mom gave it to me i'm like you still have that thing and oh my god it's a full comic i drew of the ninja Turtles. <laughs> that's oh amazing god. yeah and like at the end of it like, oh, is it donatello who gets turned into a squirrel or something is like it that. and it's your story you designed yeah, this this whole story. thing yeah, it's my own made up thing and i'm gosh this is so bad i might have to go on twitch and just read it one night yeah um, i would oh, dude I would do that, and I would I would actually like frame like almost like frame by frame do like an Instagram story of it like all the way through, uh, depending on how long it is, of course. Oh, it's not that long. No, I mean I was only what? Well, let's see. Back then, I was probably like ten. Right. Ten, eleven. Uh, uh, let's see. Is there a painting I'm working on? Yeah. Um. I am working on that landscape that Michael he sent me like a. Oh, image. we're talking like 24 hours old at this point. Yeah. Uh, just, yeah. we just started that last night. I forgot, not forgot, but that's, that's, it's crazy how it's good. Actually. I think, uh, that your most recent work is like, oh yeah, I just started that like the other day. Well, and one of my training teachers said, people ask me what my favorite work it is. It's the one I'm working on. I think that's a great way. <laughs> that is good though. Cause yeah. I, even as I look back into my old work sometimes. I try not to, like, ref- I, it's one thing to reflect. I think it's another to dwell. And mm-hmm. I, yeah. it's not that yeah. I don't want to look at my old work, but mm-hmm. I try, I, 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 I almost, I almost avoid it a little bit. Mm-hmm. It's posted, um, it's in the store, and enjoy. And I just kind of leave it. Um, I look at certain things on mine just to see how I did them. Because there's certain things I like and certain things I can't stand I don't ever want to do that again. Uh oh, we got an invader here. Oh no, cats! <laughs> Which cat is that? That is Luna. Luna, where's where's the other menace? 
<laughs> Kylo is doing Sith shit. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing Sith shit. <laughs> He's busy. No, that's that, that's funny. But no, I think that's a good way to put it, though, that, that your favorite is the most recent one you're working on, because in a way it kind of shows that you are invested in that this is what i'm this is where my attention is and this is what i'm yeah. you know you're not painting this one and thinking about four pieces so, ago but at the same time i did that series of 10 where i was working on it and I, that was fun but that took a lot out of me i think that's why i didn't paint for a while it was dude 10's a lot it, dude. Are, is that on instagram as well is that like in its own slide or are they all separate um they're all separate separate posts i mean like yeah they are um like yeah i never did like a slide gotcha um no that's i think 10 is a lot i i could maybe consider what? doing a series of like three <laughs> and that even that yeah. is considerable amounts of work and three's good that's kind of what they promoted that here's the other little bastard um, there he is <laughs> yeah but uh he's at the what's i said Oh, series of three is kind of what they did when I was getting my bachelor's. They wanted to, they wanted to do about three. Uh, that's interesting, and I I chose three almost as instinctively, um, mm -hmm. but the fact that that almost like sort of rings true in in somebody else's lesson um, is that just because maybe it's sort of just the the Goldilocks just right type thing. I what think it, it kind of three's just a good number. Yeah. 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 What is she in the sink? She's trying to climb up there. <laughs> She's using the knobs of the the door underneath my sink to climb, like a mountain climb, like when you yeah, like yeah, like a handhold. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Little really? bastards. When did you get them? You got them recently. Uh, got them. Uh, I can actually tell you. I was gonna say I should know, and I, I kind of was, don't oh, remember. It was late September. I think it was late September. No, early October. It was like October fifth. Because they um, they were with their mom for two months, and then they weaned them off and gave them to me. So August, um, yeah, it was August fifth they were born. So got them around. I wonder if they, they do I, that purposely with both dogs and cats. Because I got him at like almost exactly eight weeks old. I think it was like yeah. on the button, and that's yeah. like. Actually, no, it was okay. So it was a little earlier than that because I got him around six weeks. It wasn't eight. Okay, um, interesting. I do remember that they do. They say six for cats. That way they. It's kind of interesting. They learn how to wash and stuff like that because the mother teaches them how to wash. If you take them away too quick, they won't clean themselves, I guess. Isn't yeah. No thanks. Yeah, I'm like, ugh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, That's right. amazing. I would have like never considered that. Um, is there anything you want to take a couple moments to sort of like just express in your own words? If there's anything you want to promote um, other than your Instagram? Um, so, uh, uh, a Bob Ross lesson for us, if you will, if, if you have anything, I just was curious if you wanted to take a moment to kind of take the floor. Oh, just, you mean like a general, just ideas when you're painting kind of thing? Yeah, it could be, could be art related for sure. could be life for all I care. Um, I like to give everyone a chance to just, just speak freely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if everybody has any questions, um, but I guess the one thing that I've taken away from art is cover your canvas as quick as you can just cover it just cover it don't leave white white's your enemy <laughs> when you're if you're painting if you're drawing that's of course you need white in there um it's part of it but um no you want to definitely block in your background your subject all that just one shot the quicker the better i find that works every time yeah i i get that a lot too because once it's covered and it's not white anymore once my eyes picking up an actual shade or yeah. hue or however you want to call yeah. that I can make an adjustment from there, but if it's just white, I'm, I'm going from zero. So it, even if I block in, like I'm working on that jacket that's pretty dark blue, nearing black in some areas, I just made it blue. And it's like, okay, it's too bright. So we go darker and darker and darker until I realize like, oh, there's a color match there. That looks right to me. Yeah. Yep, yep. Yeah. Whoa. That makes sense. Well, hey there. <laughs> I think it's a springboard. <laughs> I don't like bubble but that's okay. All right, say goodbye, cats. There we go. Bye, cats. <laughs> but um, no, this this has been great. Now, other than art, I mean, we can we can push off that a second. Like, what have you been? Uh, what have you been playing? Because I mean, I, I I talk to gamers all day. I I talk to content creators all day. Um, What's new in the gaming world? 
just Valhalla. Um, oh yeah. Just pushing through that. And I always get look at the little flashing lights in the distance and get distracted from the quest for the hundredth time, but love it. Um, Very Skyrim syndrome. Uh-huh. Just that, with the way the compass shows you, it's just like, oh, there's something over there, and off I go. I'm the same way. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that, uh, like I told you last night, playing Fortnite with Erica and Paul, and um, been having fun with that. Uh, we got a good team of four going, and we had like four wins last night. That was cool. That's um, great. Yeah, because that's a rough game. It really, <laughs> it is, rough. it is though. I mean, it can be. Uh, um, yeah. Some people, that's just all they do all day, and... I mean, you've said it a hundred times. You so much as ping someone, and they're just building. Yeah, it's like there's the Sears Tower. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for real, one shot, and they're just like all the way to the fucking sky, dude. Yeah, there's uh, Fortnite. I've been playing Fallout seventy six with um, Paul. Mm-hmm. What else? That's a big just game the, too, though. If you let it be, that's a big game. <laughs> A huge map. We will run for like a half hour and go. It feels like a half mile in the game. It's I have never seen anything like it. Mm-hmm. I thought it was going to be a lot smaller. And, uh, it's yeah. it's 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 not only um, scaled quite large, but um, I mean, even if you just run through a city, you can almost walk into every building as long as there's an open door, window, broken wall, tunnel, something. There's a you can dig through every fucking drawer. I mean, mm-hmm. you'll spend a lot of time in one area just because there's so right. much. Yeah, exactly. And they've added these stupid little things. Like, you can put this punch bowl in your house, and you can't drink from it, but all your teammates can. You can, like, pour, like, alcohol into it, and they'll get, they go in and party. It's like a party bowl. What? Drunk, Does it at least give you, like, a buff? I think it does, but, yeah, you get a little... <laughs> That's funny. Um, um, what else? I know, because we, we often play the same things over and over, but, I mean, in a good way. Um, I mean, I love our I love our nights with Rainbow Six Siege. The, the, just a ridiculously difficult game sometimes, but... That AI is so scary and so damn funny sometimes. For real. Just when they, when they face plant in a wall, it just never gets old. And... It's arguably some of the funniest shit I've ever seen out of just simple AI. He's my boy. Your boy, there he is. Boy, yeah, you. <laughs> <laughs> what up? I gotta meet him some person sometime. Oh, he's a trip. He drives me crazy sometimes, but he's fun. Yeah, well, these two little guys, yeah, guy and girl, I should say. Right. Um. No, it's it's mostly been um, what we normally play. We go through siege. We go through black desert. Um, I know I've been avoiding Overwatch like the plague, but I, <laughs> I do enjoy that too. That's Love super fun. Much. Yeah. I do though. That's the that the art the hardest part I have with Overwatch is, I love it. I I do, but man, it, something about it just irks me to no end, dude. It, you just get the wrong team sometimes. Is all it is. It's like almost any multiplayer game. You you get the ones that know that they're they're trolling you. Like yeah, Yo, if we do all this. You ain't even gonna get a bitch. Like. Dude, a bastion behind a Reinhardt being buffed by a Mercy. Yeah, and then an Orissa throwing stuff. And then an Orissa, sure, sure. Just drives me crazy. I keep it. It just it's. I say it all the time. It's just horrible for my blood pressure. Oh, the one cityscape. Let's throw that up real quick that you did that I wanted you to. Look oh, at. mine. Oh, yeah. let's see. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. Where is that? Here we go. That's actually one of my favorite ones of yours. Now, I can actually make that a little smaller, I think, even though that fits the screen. Yeah, that's not yeah, bad, actually. A little, um, little bit smaller if you can. Yeah. Now, can you see that okay? Uh, zoomed out a little. A uh, little bit more. Little more. Yeah, little more. Good. A little bit more. A little bit more. All righty. All righty. Hold on. I think that's almost it. A little bit more. Yeah, let me... Let uh, me... Dude, I just, I just love that painting, dude. I, I love the shape. Um, I love that like telephone pole that's like reflecting. Perhaps so. I'm appealing to your to your love of angles there without even knowing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's definitely it's it's got that angle. Yeah, that the one building to the left of it, that like dark one. It's definitely that the top of the building follows that telephone pole line, and I, I love that. That that's my angle. 
Not that's not why I like it. It's just no, no, no. And even if that I'm is why you like it, even if that is why you like it, I. In there, that's, I like it. <laughs> that's a good thing. Yeah, I like that. I, would not... <laughs> I love that lighting, like that. Just that light on there. That's beautiful. That's so, a really. It, it feels like a skyscraper to me. Like that's... you don't have a in it. You kept it very minimal. I love that. I think that's so good. I appreciate that a lot. Um, I. Uh, that that glare there on the edge of the building is exactly what I'm talking about with the uh, earlier. I said something about um, using pure whites, mm-hmm. and uh, mm-hmm. that's as white as the color wheel would allow me. Yeah, um, it looks bright though. It doesn't look. But it like looks. I it hope it looks. Cool. You know, correct. No, no. It, that's in some cases pure white works. Um, I find that works better than pure black. Like, mm. um, sorry, taking a drink. Um, you were actually with me the day I took this picture, I think. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, we took uh, we took this one and the ones in Times Square. Yep. Uh, there's the Times Square one, and then you have it in your slideshow there. That's one of them as well. Yes, correct. It's actually the one like with all the like those neon signs, I think, or not yeah, net yeah. neon. I think they're screens, really. But, like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't even they. Yeah, they look neon. Yeah, they almost they almost kind of give off like a neon glow. Um, they're just they're just so bright, especially at night, of course. Um, no, I, I I enjoyed those because those were some of my earlier paintings as well, and those paintings showed me kind of just how much I like digital painting. Um, again, there's a lot of tools that help me out. Um, I actually didn't use them quite as much in that one as I do in my ones now. But like you said, sometimes being a little more minimal is good. Less is more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, it's, I mean, some people get super detailed. And I love their work, but man, I just, I, I really like that one. I just, I, just I appreciate that. Yeah. It's funny because I look at it now and I would have used like a straight line tool and, and, I thought you did. well, and I did in, well, oh, I take that back. In Corel, there's the straight line option. Oh, I know what you mean. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. In Procreate, you yeah. can actually pull a line. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, well, I mean, I you could do this all the way to the top and then let it hold a minute and it'll just, it. yeah. yeah. And it is yeah. borderline cheating, but I don't think so. at the yeah. same time, on a physical piece of art, you could use a ruler. So I think well, there's, whether a, you're using a straight line tool digitally or a ruler physically, we're after the same goal. We're trying to get those angles right. We're trying to get the the perspective right um especially if a vanishing point is is yeah. prevalent in a piece uh just the classic railroad tracks you know that go all the way to the horizon line kind of thing mm-hmm. yeah um, yeah totally. no it's perfect for that yeah um well yeah again man i just thank you so much for doing this this i just oh, no. Dude, no, that's cool just, love doing this we can do yeah. this anytime you like uh any subject we could just talk yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, always up to that. And, and uh, if you know, if you ever want to play anything with us on stream, by all means, you know, yeah, where, yeah. You, you know where to find us. I mean, we're doing Rogue Company there for a bit, and then, but uh, we got to get some gang beasts in. I don't know if anybody's watching that used to watch our little gang beast excursions. We should do that tonight. We, <laughs> <laughs> we could do that. Yeah, we could do that for sure. I yeah. uh, I love me some gang beasts. Always funny. Just a goofy game. I, I'm such a fan of how like ridiculous it is because I don't get I don't get mad and it just helps me kind of just play the game. I might just be like, oh crap, he threw me off. But yeah, exactly. That's about it. Yeah, exactly. I love it. I love it. It just I can play that for five minutes and I'm just hoarse from laughing. Right. It. And uh, again, thank you so much for your time, man. This has been this has just been so much fun. Yeah. I'm glad no, we got to you. do this. Um, no, you're a good inter- great interviewer. Yeah, you don't you don't like. It. That was pretty fluid for like an hour and a half. Oh, That's dude, stuff. thank you. I, I again, sitting down and doing the work, I looked up so many big time interviewers and just anything they had to say about it and tried to just take notes. And I think I've yammered your ear off a thousand times about it already, but it, it, it's yeah. it's a new skill for me. It's a new craft. It's something I'm working on. But yeah. uh, for being this early in the podcast, uh, you're the fourth episode. I, I really just appreciate your time very much. And I'm glad we could yeah. do this. No, it was fun, for sure. No, uh, thanks for tuning in, everybody, and listening to me 